Thank you for listening to the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast with host Clara and Jimmy Hinton. If you're new to the podcast, please subscribe and share so you never miss an episode. Search for us on your favorite podcast app, or you can find the podcast on jimmyhinton.org and findingahealingplace.com. Please rate our show, subscribe, and share so we can spread the word. If you would like to support us and get exclusive rewards, go to patreon.com slash speaking out. Find a tier that best fits you and join as a patron of the podcast. Now let's get into the show. Welcome to this week's podcast with host Jimmy Hinton. And Jimmy's mom, Clara. Okay. Um, so current events. We're going to talk about a couple things that are in the news that um, are making their rounds and are uh, pretty important. But first, we want to say a huge thank you to our patrons. Um, you make this podcast possible. So thank you. We do. Always thank you, and we thank you for the additional encouragement you give also. We just had our Q&A with some we of did. our uh, patrons a few days ago, and that was really fun. Uh, we had tons of really good questions, and we did. we're supposed we ran to go out half of time, an hour, but we, we ended up yeah. going 45 that was, minutes. It was amazing. Yeah, and it we was really good. More. Yeah. So we do love interacting yes. with our patrons, and uh, to have that time every month is, is really important to us. So thank you. Um. So current events, there are a couple of things that um, I think are, are uh, newsworthy. They're in the news. People are talking about it. it. It's really important. And the first thing we want to talk about is this Minnesota decision that the Supreme Court of Minnesota made that says, um, I'm going to read the title of this one article. This comes from uh, NBCNews.com. Drunk rape victim was not, quote unquote, mentally incapacitated. Minnesota Supreme Court rules. Okay, so I'm going to read just the first couple paragraphs. They're super short, couple sentences. Um, a person who is sexually assaulted while intoxicated does not fit the designation for a more serious charge if he or she consumed the alcohol or drugs voluntarily, the Minnesota Supreme Court said in a ruling released Wednesday. The opinion stems from the case of... Um, I don't know how you pronounce this name. Uh, yeah, I don't know either. Looks like this Fran Francois or Franchoise mm -hmm. um, Mamulu uh, Khalil, a Minneapolis man who was convicted of third degree criminal sexual misconduct because the victim was drunk and considered by the jury to be mentally incapacitated. The woman met Khalil uh, after she was refused entry to a bar because she was too intoxicated. So he ended up, um, short story, he ended up raping her. The lower court ruled that she was mentally incapacitated, thereby not able to consent. And the Supreme Court in Minnesota overturned that. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get um, too angry at the Supreme Court, I don't pin this blame on the Supreme Court because the Supreme Court has to make their rulings based on current laws. Right. They can't, right. the Supreme Court does not have the power to create laws. They just, they can't do it. Mm -hmm. They make rulings on right. current laws. Right. So the unfortunate thing is um, the laws in Minnesota are really antiquated um, and they, uh, they don't reflect, um, they don't reflect other states that say uh, they have laws that say that when you're incapacitated, mm -hmm. you're really unable to consent. You are a victim. And I think that's no common sense. No matter what. Right? Yes. Like, you can't make judgment calls. Right. You, you cannot do that. And, and I know, unfortunately, laws like this in Minnesota um, really play into this Christian narrative mm -hmm. that, well... You know, you dug your own grave right. because you went to a party. Yep. You got drunk. Mm -hmm. You made the decision to drink. Right. Okay. Nobody I, forced you to drink. Right. right. And, and and I want to understand that, but I'm not sympathetic to that argument yeah. at no. all. Um, mm -mm. While it is true that people become in, incapacitated, they get intoxicated, uh, they make the decision to get drunk, that doesn't give people permission ever to rape them. It right. should not mm -hmm. be justified to be able to rape people 
because they're drunk. I thought this That's through, not right. through and no. And it says, you know, drunk from alcohol and or drugs. Mm -hmm. Voluntarily well, voluntarily drunk. voluntarily, yes. And it makes no sense. That law makes no, no sense at all. Because that person, and I'm thinking, you know, there are legal drugs, illegal drugs. Mm -hmm. um, if I take a uh, allergy pill, which I need extremely badly right now, if I would take an allergy pill, I'll act like I have some kind of alcohol intoxication going on. Yeah. If I take double that medicine, and sometimes I do, because I I have such a headache and my eyes are so going crazy and all. I can't drive. I can't do anything. Does that give somebody the right to rape me? Right. Or I, to I, or I mean, like um these uh these phone scammers that that call oh, people yeah. and take advantage oh, of people. Yeah. It's horrible. Because you're mentally mm -hmm. um challenged. In, incapa yeah. Incapacitated or right. intoxicated. Mm -hmm. Does that give people the right? To take advantage of you. No. 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 Um, what about lifting your purse from you, robbing right. you? Mm -hmm. If they see you in your car and you're zonked out, does that give somebody permission to open up your that's door analogy, and to steal Jimmy. your purse that's a or really to beat the great, crap out yeah, of you? That, those are no. great analogies. No, absolutely not. So why in the case of rape? Right. Why is it okay then? And this reminded <clears> me <throat> of the case of um, Chanel Miller. Chanel Miller was mm -hmm. known as Emily Doe back in 2015. Right. Big case. Uh, right. When at Stanford, uh, she went to a party. Mm -hmm. She voluntarily got drunk. Right. Um, she was walking. She was walking home, and Brock Turner, um, who was I think he was there on a swimming scholarship. He was 19 years old at mm -hmm. the time. She was 22. He pulled her behind a dumpster. And was forcibly, right. he forcibly digitally penetrated her. Um, thank God there were two bystanders who, mm -hmm. who walked by. And the way Chanel describes it, um, before they even had time to think about it, they, they chased Brock down mm -hmm. and kept him from raping me right. because he was going to rape yeah. her. Oh, yeah. um, so she, she wrote a memoir, which is uh, called Know My Name. Um, by, again, by Chanel Miller, and that's been trending as the number one book in sociology of abuse on Amazon. Uh, it has over almost 6,000 ratings. Uh, it's a five-star review. Mm -hmm. um, but in California, what happened was that they had a similar law to Minnesota where they, they narrowly defined what rape was, and it didn't include digital penetration. <sighs> oh, Wow. Okay. So because he okay. forcibly that, held oh, her down, okay. she voluntarily drank the alcohol mm -hmm. uh, because he didn't penetrate her with his penis. Um, it was not considered rape, according to wow. according, according to, to the law, uh, the law yeah. in California. Wow. So what ended up happening was he got a really light slap on the wrist. He got a six year sentence. He served three and got out on good behavior. Mm, I remember that case, um, yeah. Now, he is a registered <laughs> sex offender for mm. the rest of his life, but... And he um, should be. The point is, he got practically unscathed. Right. He got a, mm -hmm. a, a virtually no prison sentence whatsoever. And to California's credit, they went back and they revamped their laws after this mm -hmm. case because there was such a public outcry. But with Minnesota, my fear is... Um, the story is kind of getting buried among so many other things that are happening right now mm -hmm. that I don't know that it's going to get the publicity that the Brock Turner case got. And so, it takes a lot of momentum. It takes a lot of publicity. It takes a lot to of get pressure. Yeah. Change like this. Yeah. 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 Without uh, public outcry. Sometimes our laws really stink, don't they? Yeah. And you're right. Things need updated. And... Um, Something like this, you wonder how it ever got on the books mm -hmm. to begin with. How did yeah. that happen? Well, you know? I mean, my theory is that a lot of these laws are on the books because you have Christian men who have this yeah. this old mentality that, mm -hmm. well, you know, if she welcomed it because, this, you know, and, right? and when you hear yeah. Chanel, Chanel Miller mm -hmm. talk about what happened that night, she said, I was up on a table and I was I was dancing and I was being silly and I was having yeah. fun. Um 
And a lot of men in this in this old mentality have this idea that, well, you were just inviting somebody. She wanted it, because, so I gave yep, it to which her. Which is what yeah. Sheila Gregoire right. talks about she in, wanted in her it, book. She wanted it, so I gave it to uh, her. The Great yeah. Sex Rescue. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm reading my way mm-hmm. through that, and we're going to interview her um, in April. I'm excited about that. But she That'd talks awesome. about that. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. she's like, you know, there's this, there's this inherent idea that men have these needs, these sexual needs that women don't have. And right. they're, they're visual people. They're hypersexualized. And basically they, you know, women are there to serve them. They're and, there to serve and them. And when they trigger right. them in some way, it's a man's right to. Yeah. It's the man's right. It's, and it's his, the woman's fault. Right. Exactly. And that is a very conservative Christian view that I grew up with mm-hmm. in our church. Yep. And I can remember lessons being taught about mm-hmm. that. I yep. truly can. Men can walk around in their underwear mm-hmm. in front of little kids or right. women or whatever. But girls, you know, the whole mixed mixed swimming thing, you know? <laughs> girls are... To, they're, they're not allowed to swim in front mm-hmm. of men because they might tempt them. Um, I always laughed um, when it came time for, for Christian camp. It could be close to a 100 degrees mm-hmm. and yet... Girls had to wear these hot sweatpants that you wear yep. in the winter time, and it made absolutely no sense whatsoever. No. None. Right. But they had to be completely covered. At at an age of, uh, I remember when your sister Michelle went, she was eight years old, mm-hmm. crying her eyes out. She was so hot. But the reason and, behind that yeah, is I that know. Yeah. we don't want these girls children Enticing. to be a stumbling block yes, to, to these exactly. innocent men right so Made me i crazy that so i think that's where these laws come from now yeah and you're these right. laws come from men yes. who wrote these laws mm-hmm. that buy into this whole thing that you know women are the seductresses um right. they're responsible for men acting mm-hmm. out you know right. this guy I, I remember an email exchange that i received from a preacher in the churches of christ um this guy was arrested Trying to think of his name. Um, man, if I could remember his name, I would say it loud and proud. Um, but this was in the state of Alabama. And he was caught sodomizing a 15-year-old girl in an empty parking lot after a church service on, oh. on a midweek service on a Wednesday night. Uh, a police officer saw this car that was in this vacant parking lot. He pulled in and... Mm-hmm. caught this preacher in the act of sodomizing mm-hmm. this 15 year old girl i was given an email exchange from the elders of that church um by an attorney uh he had he had connections to the church and he had sent me this email exchange mm-hmm. and we started up a dialogue and then um not long after this this guy passed away um the guy who sent me the email but the email exchange was between it was among the elders from elders to elders and the way they talked about this poor girl, it, it was, I believe it, it was disgusting. Yeah, I believe it. And they said, yeah, uh, I remember the one line, it jumps off, off the page at me, but I'll, I'll never forget. This elder said, um, you know, this, this girl, this, he called her a young woman, this young woman, uh, the way she dresses when she comes to church and the way she, mm-hmm. you know, she hugs all over people. And what his line was, what grown man wouldn't be tempted by someone like that. her? I knew you'd say that. Yeah. Uh, she's 15, 15 years, years old. old. She's a child. That doesn't matter how and she it dresses. it didn't matter if she was 60 years old. Right. That's it right. It wouldn't matter. It doesn't make that right. No. Ever. So, period. you know, all the responsibility was on this 15-year-old girl, girl right. not, the, not the preacher who raped her, mm. who forcibly raped her and trafficked her. He was pimping her out, um, and there That's was evidence awful. that was given That's to me awful. that that I saw uh, both the preacher and her biological father, who was also a police officer, were pimping wow. this poor girl out. Wow. And the elders came back and they were like, "Well, what you know, what grown man wouldn't uh, wouldn't fall into that kind of temptation?" So I think it's this mentality that that is why we have those. Laws. Yeah, the way yes. the way women dress mm-hmm. uh, or girls, for that matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, what they drink, them dancing on tables and being intoxicated, somehow that's an invitation to be raped, and they get what's coming to them. Well, 
no, that's not, that's not no. okay. That's never okay. And we're not saying that getting drunk and doing all that is okay. No. But, but it doesn't invite rape. No. Rape is a, a criminal I'm... act. Right. It is not criminal exactly right. to act silly. Right. It's not criminal. And it's not criminal to, to, to get drunk. Right. It's not criminal it's to not, drink too much right. unless there's you're behind the wheel. There's a big difference. Or you have public there. intoxication where you're just yes, making a complete... Yes, but there's a big difference fool between of yourself, that. But, right. Yeah. But, right. you know, no it, it's... And young people, too. I mean, young people, whether we like it or not, mm -hmm. many young people... Are, they're going to drink. They're going to party. They're at a time they in their life where it's going to happen. They will experiment with alcohol. They will experiment. But that's not an invitation to be assaulted. No, it is not. And thank you for using that word because that's what rape is. Yeah. It's criminal, a criminal act of yeah. assault. Yes. So that's in the news right now. And we hope that, uh, you know, I, I, I hope more eyes are going to be on Minnesota. Um, I think the Supreme Court, unfortunately, I think... Their hands were tied. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's, you know, a group of people who believe that drunk women should be raped. I really don't. Um, I, I don't think, either. I think they need updated laws and uh, people need to really advocate for, for an update. In their and laws. this is just a reminder, Jimmy, that the people we vote into office, that we have a voice with them mm -hmm. and we can speak to them. Right. And address things like this in a yeah. proper way. And yeah. say, we need to see this changed. Yeah. And this is not a, a left or a right no, issue. No, it's no. A, it's a moral it's a, issue. It's a moral it's, and a common yes. sense and issue. And a justice, an, an issue of justice. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing that's in the news, and, and I honestly wish it was in the news more, um, I don't think there's been nearly enough attention on this. It's um, Governor Cuomo in New York. Uh -huh. He's grabbing and groping these women. Mm -hmm. And... He's so defiant, he's given the big middle finger to people and saying, well, I'm not going to resign. Um, well, <laughs> good. Then mm -hmm. you're going to be impeached. Um, the ninth mm -hmm. victim now has come forward. Nine. Nine victims. And there's a picture. Uh, she did an interview. She worked for him. Uh, her daughter posted a picture of Cuomo. I'm looking at it right now. Right. Of Cuomo grabbing her by the neck, like throttling her and planting a big fat kiss on her in her home. Um, it's just gross. When you look at that picture, well, it's, it's just the gross. way his hand is grasping her. And if I read the article correct, it's hard to see clearly. She had a dog that she was holding against her, and it said she, he pushed that aside, her hand aside, and he gets her and he. She said she was so uncomfortable as he's kissing her, and I could see why. Right? Yeah, just I, the I way he's see... grabbing her. I'm mean, yeah. forcibly grabbing her. Yes. And he's leaning in like he he's is all very much dominating yes. her. And uh, I mean, very it's much really disgusting. The the body language there speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. And she looks really surprised by it. Oh in, my goodness! In the picture. Yes, yes. Like she's she stiff. Away from she's scared. Look how she's standing as opposed to mm -hmm. him. But she, um, I watched this interview with her and she was terrified to speak up. And she said um, she really feared retaliation. Mm -hmm. And given Cuomo's arrogant uh, attitude, the guy's a jerk. Mm -hmm. um, the guy's a misogynist. Um, he's, he's arrogant, both him and his brother. Um, mm -hmm. And so when I saw these allegations coming forward, I wasn't surprised no, in the least bit. I was going to say, nah. And in fact... Uh, mm -hmm. Governor Cuomo was the one who signed the legislation in New York for the two-year window. Which is quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah, because yeah. Pennsylvania, yeah. Um, we have a governor who, in my opinion, is, um, is really botching this uh, two-year window. Yeah, he is. And yeah. uh, it's just been a, it's been a complete circus show. And... Um, uh, New it's York fight was really we're... quick yeah, they to were. pass it. Yeah, right and away. Governor yeah. Cuomo signed yeah. this yes. bill that yeah. was for sex assault victims. And uh, it, it opened up a two-year window looking back mm -hmm. where people who are outside of the statute of limitations could open up right. and file a lawsuit. Um, I think, don't you think that's part of 
being somebody in his position, he thinks that he he gained a lot of popularity through that. Yeah, he did. And then, yes, you know, it's did. like he's the good guy while he's being the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of that thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, so. too, he was probably thinking, in his mind, he was probably thinking nobody in, the, in their right mind would... Uh, would question right whether I'm um, because you know, look what he did harassing what he all saw. of my yeah. all of my right. employees. Sure, he felt safe. Mm -hmm. It's that whole abuse thing that we talk about week after week after week. Yeah. It's kind of that thrill. Mm -hmm. If I sign this, I'm a really super good guy. All eyes are off of me. Yep, absolutely. So it's all systems go, and no victim would ever speak up exactly against the governor who signed right. one of the biggest bills that was yes. that was. I mean, all over national mm -hmm. news. Yeah, this was yeah. touted yes. as the most important bill for, for abuse victims, kind for justice. It kind of makes you wonder how calculated even that type of thing is. Yeah. How, how well thought out. Mm -hmm. Because if I do this, all eyes are off of me in that light. Yep. Yes. So I, I think, you know, where do we go from here? I think one... Um, Abuse advocates should be speaking up against Cuomo. I don't see them speaking up. They sure had no problem talking about Trump, and, and rightfully so, uh, that he's, yeah. you know, he was a pervert. He um, he said and did things that were inappropriate. Um, I think he certainly got a lot of attention, as he should have, right. uh, for being gross and being crude and, uh, you know, inappropriate with women. Um, but I think it's interesting that there's dead silence. I was going to say, what happened? Cuomo. Yeah. It uh, was relentless, the speaking out previous to this. Mm -hmm. And now it's almost as if either people just flat out got tired, maybe tired of all of it. Yeah. I don't and, know and if weary, this is a kind a, of weary soldiers. Type yeah. Of thing. I don't know if this is a party line thing. I don't know. Cause that, yeah. you know, I, I I've don't not think asked so. People I think why they're not being vocal, but, uh, but I don't hear anything about. I think people just got to the point of being tired of all the bickering and negativity. And so it's almost easier to draw back and be quiet. And it's that feeling of, so what if we do speak out? So what? I, I'm reading online, on social media, a lot of advocates have slowed down or they're pulling back and saying, I need a rest. Mm -hmm. I'm just backing down for a while. You know, support me in... My resting period. Well, I think, you know, I think part of that, that is when when people do speak out, I experienced this myself um, in speaking out against Ravi Zacharias. And in fact, um, I got to see if I can find this. <laughs> I It's, this is really important. Um, did you get a nasty email? No, it was on our YouTube video where we did our episode Dang. on Ravi Zacharias. Yeah. And, uh. I want to I want to read this for you guys because this shows you where people's minds are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, oh, here's one. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Uh, this this just proves my point. This isn't even the one that I was going to uh, read, but it's from the same guy. He, so he wrote both of these comments, but um, and his uh, his YouTube name is Evangelist. Uh, so he's a preacher. Oh, I'm shocked. Um, and I love his I love his English too. Why you're not speaking about the women who used Ravi and gained finances? You're you're in justice because you're highlighting one side, um, other hiding. Because of women in the beginning of God's creation started. Um, it got cut off there, so I had to click on it. Um, I have a feeling I know where he was going with that. Wimp, since the beginning, well, they, women were oh, tempted. You yes, know, Eve yes, herself, the first sin, that little yes. vixen, you know, yep. tempted the man. Yes. Uh, and then his other comment: "He that is without sin among you, let him first no. cast a stone." So stop speaking this news in in public publicly. If you're a real Christian, you should pray. Otherwise, you're still damaging his family. No, no, I'm not. No. Um, Ravi Zacharias needs, even though he's dead, we still need to point out that the guy was a serial abuser and he rapist. Sure was. Yeah, yeah. And he, and he, you, and anyone else who speaks out 
against his actions are not doing the hurting. He did that to himself. Right. He yeah. did that to his family. And his, fa- and, he and did and his that. family yes. also, he, yes. when they worked really hard to cover it up and they right. denied, all and the facts were presented to yes, them. Yes. I know Julianne Smith. Uh, Julianne Smith is a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. She repeatedly gave evidence, including email exchanges between Lori right. Ann Thompson and, and Ravi Zacharias. No, yes. You Expects can't get that. any no. more factual firsthand information than that. No. She, she laid all of that before the board and mm-hmm. they and they railroaded her wow this is just you know you're just out to um you're just out to get them and these these emails you probably made this up no it's interesting actual but it's so predictable emails. isn't it mm-hmm. interesting but predictable and the same with cuomo i mean it, it's yeah he, he's he is a charismatic person in a different type of way mm-hmm. he is austere. He demands respect mm-hmm. uh, just by his uh, physical stature, mm-hmm. so to speak. His position, people are fearful of repercussions like we And that ought before. to be a red flag. Yes. That ought to be and a huge... If you're afraid of, of somebody yes. when you walk in the room, yes. if you're afraid of somebody mm-hmm. because just because of their position, if you walk into a room and you feel intimidated by somebody because of their position, that ought to be a huge red it flag. Is, right, right. And yet it, it happens time and time again. And you can see in that photo of the lady how her body he's is just, stiff. And she's he's like dominating this, her. And he, oh yeah, his body is over Physically her. Physically dominating her. And he's her. got her like this. No, by the neck. It's, he yeah, grabbed right her by the, here, by the yeah. neck. And it's like, are you kidding me? She, are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think the point should be this. Okay, one, with the Minnesota case, I think we really need to contact legislatures in Minnesota mm-hmm. and be like, you know, you guys, all eyes are on Minnesota right now. Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of well, this public is a attention big deal. on you. Yeah, that's a big and deal. lawmakers, you guys need to make common sense laws that don't create loopholes where it's okay to rape people. Mm-hmm. Um, that's never okay. It's never, ever, ever okay. Not in any circumstance. No. No. Um, and I think the other the other thing is, you know, with Cuomo, I see so many parallels to the church where mm-hmm. this respect is demanded because I'm a leader of the church. Yep. Don't you dare ever question me. If somebody, if somebody even implies that, run from that right. church. I, I, amen. There is no right. biblical precedent whatsoever for mm-hmm. that kind of power, that kind of authority. It does not exist in the scriptures. It doesn't. And I wrote an mm-hmm. article. I wrote, I wrote a blog post about this several years ago that says, dear church leaders, you don't have the amount of power or authority that you think you do. Mm-hmm. And that it became this viral blog post. Yeah. And, um, of course I got pushed back from that and, you know, I don't, you don't know your Bible and, you know, leadership was established in the church by God. They, they are the authority. Uh, no, they're not. Um, there is not this absolute authority where the buck stops with the leaders. Mm -hmm. You don't have the right to Mm -hmm. question them because it creates this totalitarianism, um, fear driven, uh, leadership that's. Well, it's kind of like the whole, the the way I was brought up as a kid, sit back, keep quiet and don't talk. Yep. That's it. That's That's right. That's your job as a kid. Don't ever question. No, no, no. We Mm -hmm. were not allowed to. No. Yeah. But it's dangerous. And and those kinds of environments lend themselves to abusive people because abusive people will migrate to positions Mm -hmm. where they are the absolute authority. yeah. And as long as people believe that... um, they will, abusive people will find themselves in those positions. Mm-hmm. They will assert themselves sure. in those positions. Um, so it's just dangerous. And it, and I think we really need to call to question those kinds of systems where it's okay for somebody like Cuomo, who very blatantly, I mean, in front of the cameras, he doesn't even try to hide it. The guy's just a nasty mm-hmm. jerk to people. Oh, yeah. um, uh, we shouldn't have systems where... 
we're afraid to say you're being a nasty what's, jerk. What's the guy who was on the Today Show? That Matt brought, Lauer. Yeah, yeah, Matt. He was the same way. Matt, right. Mm-hmm. Very much. Arrogant. Uh, oh, my goodness, he yes. Demanded, yes. He demanded respect. Ooh. He demanded people's attention. Yeah. But he had such a following. Mm-hmm. He truly did. Yeah. But he, and, and women were afraid to speak out. Why? Because of his power and mm-hmm. authority. Um, backlash that they would receive. Who yeah. who would challenge Matt? Uh, you know? Weinstein was the same You're, way. Exactly. He was there. a guy that, because of sure. who he was, mm-hmm. he demanded mm-hmm. that respect, and you never cross him. That ought to be a red flag. If somebody's well, treating yeah, you that that's way. That's a huge red flag. If somebody's being arrogant, if somebody's being pushy, if somebody's being a jerk to you. I understand the fear, though, Jimmy. I, do, I really do, because... Um, they are bigger than we are, and and there's always that thought there. Yeah, they are. They are, and they are. Singularly, aren't. they are. Yeah. But when we join together, right? And um, I mean, then that's yeah. different. And I think that's why your your focus, like with Minnesota, is let's join together. Let's make yeah. waves. Let's do that with Cuomo. Cuomo, why be silent? Let's make some waves here. Yeah, he's going to come un- accept... unraveled. I mean, make yeah. no mistake, he's going right. to come unraveled here really quickly. Um, but he's going to put up a fight. He'll he's, put up a fight, go but I'm so fight. proud of, like, now we have nine victims mm-hmm. who have spoken out. Soon it will be 19. Mm-hmm. And then I think yep. people will begin saying, whoa. Yep. This this is real. I mean, same with Weinstein. This, Whoever would have thought that he would go down so quickly, right? And, but it happened, right? Because well, the and survivors Matt got knocked out of and, his. Yep, Lauer. I mean, he, he. I think he thought he was king of the world there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and you never hear his name anymore. Uh-uh. Isn't that something? Yeah, no, nope. it's like he doesn't exist. Thankfully. So yeah, I mean, I guess. We can leave you with this truth bomb, but, you know, if you're a survivor, find other people if you're able to. Um, right. Find other other victims, other victim survivors. Find people who are willing to uh, speak up, even if even if they're hesitant, but there's mm-hmm. part of them that, that wants to seek some sort of justice. Link arms with them if you can and um, push back, because I promise you, as powerful as these guys think they are, that power pales in comparison to what power you actually have just by doing the right thing. Um, so I would really encourage you to do that. Truth always wins. Yeah. And it does. In the end, it always does. Yeah, for sure. So thank you guys for tuning into this episode, and we'll catch you next round. Thanks again for listening to today's episode. Thank you to our patrons who make the podcast possible. If you found it helpful, please follow on Spreaker and search for the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast in your favorite podcast app. Be sure to hit subscribe and rate the show. If you believe in what we do, consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patron and check out the cool rewards our patrons receive. Share with your friends and tell the world. Join us in speaking out on sex abuse so we can change the tides and prevent abuse.